So in this video, we're going to create a connecting rod and a piston for our Stirling engine. Stirling engine looks like this. And what we're going to do is create this connecting rod, this piston. Uh, we really don't know how far the piston goes down because we don't have a base. So we'll just leave it kind of dangling in space once we create it. In the following video, we'll create the base and attach the cylinder to the base and get this thing all up and running. Just to review, we have a top level assembly and the top level assembly rotates. And then we also have a layout. And we went through and we tried to get the layout to match up to the assembly as close as possible. One of the things that I do want to do in this video is when we created the crank, we created a layout sketch. And one of the things that's nice is that we can rotate this and everything updates associated with where this is working. Um, I don't really like this and I want to correct this behavior. I'm going to rotate it in the assembly, I'm not gonna rotate it in the part studio. And the problem is, let's just go through, the counterbalance is based on uh, the layout sketch. So these two entities right here, let's just go through the details. That is the association between this sketch and our layout sketch, causing this thing to rotate. If you watch the earlier video that there are positions that you can rotate this and this sketch actually collapses. And instead of trying to make this sketch more robust so it doesn't collapse, I'm just gonna cancel the idea that I'm gonna be rotating a sketch in the part studio, rotating parts belong in the assembly. So I'm gonna cancel this idea altogether. And then there's something else that I was thinking that would be better as far as a um, design intent. And what I really want to do is I want to be able to control how far that piston comes down. I want to be able to control everything about this linking arm so that it always comes down to a particular spot. That's going to be my design intent. Let me go off and do it real fast. So for me to control that, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna edit this. And I'm gonna put in a constraint causing this to be forced. And now it's vertical. So this is the distance of my lever arm. And then this is the distance of my crank arm. But I don't want that uh, 43 millimeters anymore. What I wanna do is I wanna control the end of this arm right here. And really the only reference that I have is the bottom of this bracket at this time. So I'm gonna take the bottom of this bracket and I'm gonna dimension to And I am going to assume that this is my top dead bottom, if you will, or top dead center. And I like the idea that I can control um, the compression ratio for this piston. So that's gonna be defined in my layout. If I go back to my assembly, nothing has really changed as far as the assembly is concerned. Oh, except for the sketch blew up. Yeah, so see, these are the things that I've been trying to eliminate. Uh, so, this is the problem with rotating a sketch in space. Counterbalance. And so this arm uh, actually inverted itself. So how do we invert this again? Uh, best thing to do is just uh, get out of this. Let's control Z out of all of this. And let's... I need to get this thing to behave. Let's not have it solve the counterbalance. Let me go back in and edit this and let me make that vertical. 
and say, okay, now let's go take a look at the counterbalance. And okay, this is very irritating. So let's go back in, let's undo this. This is the reason why I don't like these wonderful rotating sketches. Let's come into it more slowly. Okay, that's cool. And let's go in and go into this more slowly. Yeah. And that's cool. And let's hopefully think that we can go into this I'm gonna go past it a little bit. And okay, so anything. Uh, so how do I get out of this? If I go back and I'm gonna to have to fix the sketch. So let's go into here and I'm just gonna say, you are fixed. and you are fixed. Uh, I'm gonna undo that. So now let's change this and make him vertical, say, okay. The sketch regenerated, double click this, come over to here and remove the fix and hopefully it solves it properly. And it did. This is the mess. This is the reason why you don't want to be rotating sketches in a part studio to mimic animation because the sketches are just unstable. Uh, you can make them stable, but why? Okay, so now here's this and what we'll be able to do now is when we define the crank arm and the piston, we can create it if we use the layout sketch in the part studio, the uh, top dead center of the piston will always be defined in our layout basic sketch. I think we're ready to create a connecting arm. Carson, you want to take over? Just finishing my applesauce. All right. You should just be able to, if you do it, it should stop my share. If not, I'll unshare. I'll stop sharing. Oh, it did it. Okay. And I think you need to go full screen. All right, how's that look? That yeah, looks great, man. Okay, cool. So, how should we start this thing? Well, close your crank folder over on the left-hand side. And as always, let's start with a sketch. So rotate so I can see inside the crank arm. Um, yeah, I still don't. Okay, so you need to, I'll tell you what, let's do this. So pick the inside face of the crank or the counterbalance. Does it matter which one? Yeah, the inside one, not that one. That one, yes. And hit shift X on your keyboard. Now the arrow, just pull it a little bit. So cool. shift X does a cross section or That's cross section, yes. Shift X, something you, you should use all the time. You see the white arrow? Yes. Pull it towards you or pull it in its direction, just about a millimeter. No, no. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, and that's fine. Just say okay. And now we're ready to rock and roll. Your crank arm needs to be on this particular uh, 
surface. So let's go ahead and sketch on that face, the inside crank, yeah, yep. And let's create a line that goes, you know what you can do real quickly? The layout sketch has a line that represents, it's already being shown because I left it on. There's a sketch, there's a vertical line that you can see on your screen. Pick that, yeah, that is, that defines the length of your crank arm. And let's put that, we wanna use that. So just say use. Uh, I don't know what that means. Use, how do I do that? U key on your keyboard. Okay, so that just transfers it over into your existing sketch. So I'm gonna awesome. use okay. the line from the layout and I'm gonna put it into this particular sketch. That's what use is. Use geometry um, from a sketch, from an edge. And the thing of it is, is that that line is all black because it is being driven by the layout sketch. So we draw okay. the layout sketch and then to constrain it to other sketches or geometry, we can just use uh, the U key on our keyboard. I want to offset uh, the line, but I want to, I want to create a slot. So you need to go up to your uh, command line and let's go that one. Drop down, oop, nope, to the left and drop down and slot and pick the black line. And uh, you can say okay to that using the left click on your mouse. Now, okay, uh, do it again because it didn't work. Okay, uh, the left out. click is not working, so. Yeah, pick, huh? no, okay. <laughs> Well, double click on uh, sketch seven. Some people, uh, and zoom out so we can get to the dimension size. So move the 20 millimeter diameter so that it's closer to the sketch and change that to 10. Let's go down to eight. And let's go ahead and let's extrude that. Uh, nope. Say you can rename uh, sketch seven to size. So I was just trying to do. Yeah, that's fine. You can do that. Uh, okay. At this point, uh, you need to hit shift X and get out of your section, rotate the model so we can see the opposite face. I need a rotate, I need to see the opposite face, not the face, keep rotating. Keep, ro okay, there it is. Rotate down, no, rotate. Okay, there, stop. Instead of blind, you see the extrude blind? I want to change line to up to face. And I want you to pick the opposite face inside the counterbalance. Scroll in, that's it. Say okay. And double click on extrude nine and make sure that it created a new and say, okay. And let's change part five to crank arm. Oops, sorry, sorry. And now the problem with crank arm is there are no holes. So what we wanna do is go ahead and define your cross section again, like but you can hit shift X. I believe it's still in the system. Okay, good. Say okay in the green checkbox. 
edit sketch seven. Rename sketch seven to a size. Now on the crank pin diameter, you need to scroll in and you're gonna pick an edge. And I need for you to pick the edge of the pin. That's, okay, so zoom in real close. And you, yeah, that's not gonna work for you. If it's making a cross hatch, that's the edge I, okay, hit you. I hit you? Yeah. I did. And then this highlighted. Yeah, uh, yeah, but it didn't create the entity. Hit, uh, Escape a couple of times. Pick that edge. Hit the U key. Okay. Uh, try and pick the black circle. Yeah, okay, all right. It is not uh, converting that over for us. Uh, okay, let's do this instead. Click on, thank you. I want an intersection of uh, the sketch. And it is located in one of these icons. Which icon is it? So you see the use edge, you need to go up to your sketch icons. I need to tell you left and right, drop that down, intersect, pick the cylinder of the pin, that, pick, nope, that. Did you pick it? I did. <clears throat> Do we have an entity there now? Can you turn your, Turn your oh, I double off. Did that work? Okay. I don't think you got it. Hit shift X. Oh, there is one there. Uh, what's interesting is how many did we get on there? So click that edge, hit, hit escape to get out of all the commands. Click that black center circle and hit the, I bet you we just got one. Hit the delete key. Okay, pick it again. Is that? Um, yeah, that, so what, look, we've got a bunch of them stacked on top of one another. No, that's the constraint. Do not delete that. Do not pick that. Pick the black edge and hit the delete key. Pick that edge again. And okay, we got a million of them stacked up here. You need to control select. Uh, you need a window select that going from right to left. So you delete all of the sketch entities. There's probably 20 sketch entities there. So go, yeah, no, not that way. Cause you picked up that center line. You don't want to get rid of the center line above. Yeah, that, there you go. Can I do that? Hit the delete key. And they're all gone. Okay, now, very slowly hit the escape key a bunch of times. Pick that edge again. Go pick the edge, pick it, hit the U key one time. Move the mouse away. There's one edge there. Scroll all the way out so we can see the bottom. Oh. Uh, not that far. Sorry. Create a circle at the bottom of your arm. Hit the C key for circle. Pick so the diameter's there and drag a circle. Fine. Place it. Hit the escape key. Pick that circle. Select it. Pick the circle above that we just created. 
Like that, hit the E key on the keyboard that makes them equal. Say okay to the sketch size. Now we have a crank arm with a hole. Still don't like the diameter. Let's double click on size and change the size from eight down to five. That's better, say okay. All right. Uh, let's, uh, create a piston. Okay. Uh, or do you want to put it into the assembly? I, uh, <clears throat> I'd rather keep creating stuff. Okay. Let's clean up our feature manager tree, highlight the sketch size and that, and right mouse click, add to folder. And you can call this crank arm. All right. Now, we want to create a piston at the end of that crank arm. So how would we go about creating a, a piston? at the end of that. I think we're gonna be using sketches. So I want you to zoom in on that bottom hole and we're gonna create a sketch at the center of that hole that is vertical. So I need for you to create a make connector. I need for you to highlight and pick that center one, pick it but it's not in the right orientation. So I need for you to go up, pick the small one, right? That's correct. Realign that, scroll out, scroll out, scroll out, turn your planes on. P, hit the P key. Doesn't work. Uh, Okay, so primary, you can't hit the P key right now? Um, I think this is a plane, but it's micro right here. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, okay, P okay, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The E's are real picky. Primary axis, can't turn the plane on. Pick it from the feature manager tree. It is the top plane. We want the Z to be organized to. That is the sketch that I want to create. Okay, nope, 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 nope. Because that's going to exit out. All I need for you to do is to close the make connector dialog box. Zoom in. And the origin of that sketch is located perfectly at the end of that rod arm. This is what I'm looking for. I need for you to draw a circle. So create a circle. Pick like none the, of my hotkeys are working. Okay, not not vertical. I need for you to that pick. Okay, when the i that that icon when the icon says I'm going to be coincident, pick it, pick it, right now, pick, and then drag it out. There you go. And dimension that. And, okay, I'm gonna cheat. I want to, oh, change that to 12. We're gonna have a 12 millimeter piston diameter. Okay, so, once again, go up and rename sketch to size. Say, okay, or go ahead and let's extrude that. And let's go up uh, five. 
You want to go up five or you want to just it be five? And I want, let's go up three. And then second position, three. Second position is five. Oh, you you need to change uh, the upward blind to three, not eight. Blind oh, three. And I want a new part. And say, OK. Now what I need to do is I need to go to the turn everything off except for part six and rename here. Hold on. Let me show you a fast way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. OK, that's fine. Go and pick right mouse click on the piston in the graphical screen. and hide other parts up. Oh. That's a fast way. Click on the sketch, right mouse click and say hide. Hide all sketches. One of the things I like about Onshape, hide all sketches. Okay. They give you all the options, hide other whatever, hide other parts, other surfaces, hide all surfaces. I just like that a lot. Let's rename part six to piston. Let's go to the top of that piston and let's create another sketch on the top of that piston. Create a center defined rectangle. That's a, the R key on your keyboard. Uh, yeah, that time it did it. And uh, okay, so and yeah, so what we need to do, turn your crank arm on, high turn, Unhide, yeah. And we need to know what the thickness of that crank arm is. So pick, yeah, that's not, that's gonna give you the area. I need for you to pick the edge, not that edge. That's the length of the, uh, what I need for you to do is to, yeah, un, there, uh, zoom in, pick that. Okay, so that crank arm is two millimeters thick. Let's dimension this rectangle. So uh, dimension the width and the height. Yeah, so that's gonna be 2.5. Okay, sorry, sorry. Oh, you made it two. Let's give it some clearance, 2.2 .2 or something, I don't care. And then let's uh, dimension the other dimension on that. You need to zoom in so you can pick it. And I don't know, make it a uh, six right now. Okay, it's gonna have to be bigger than that because it it's gonna rock. It's not yeah. gonna rock much, <laughs> but let's make it a uh, eight. Okay, I wanna remove the material up to a face with an offset, so. Um, change blind uh, up to a face. Pick the head of the piston. That's not the head. Okay, well, but you did pick the piston. Look at your dialog box. It's red. You need to highlight the face and you need to pick the other side, not that face. That face. Now I need for you to say offset from that face. So there's an offset distance under it. And I need for you to type in two. And I need for you to reverse the direction using those arrows. And it's hard for me to see. Did it show me the head of the, uh, the piston? Rotate it so that I can see the head of the piston. Okay, I need for you to click those double arrows again. The two millimeter offset went outside the piston. Say okay, green checkbox. Do a cross section 
shift X. And there you go. So it's not the most elegant uh, piston connecting rod, but it is a piston and connecting rod. Say okay to that. We need to put a hole through the piston. So we need to figure out a plane to draw on so that we can put a hole in the piston. What plane would you select so that we can bore a hole through the piston? I wouldn't go up to that reference. I, that's a good idea. Here, can you hit shift uh, seven? Okay, so now we can actually see which face you're allowed to pick. And you want to go and you want that to- cylinder? Huh? Could I use this cylinder right here to cut through? You can create a reference to the cylinder of the hole. Me, the one that I would pick is the inside cut. So there's a face for the slot that we just put into the piston. Pick, no, you move, not that one. That's a cross section, you can't pick that one. There's a that face right there, pick it. And I'm gonna use a, a sketch. So create a sketch, create a hole, or how about this? Grab the inner edge, zoom in on the hole. That edge, pick that, you had it. Pick it and hit the U key. Now what I need for you to do is to remove material. And through all, second direction through all. And the scope is the piston, so that's good. Say okay to that. And turn your cross section off. Um, shift X. Yeah, you'll learn Shift X because I use it a lot. All right, spin it around. How do you control the diameter in the piston? Um, can I do it in uh, sketch A? Uh, it's oh, highlighted. So I don't know. Go ahead and click on sketch A. We're gonna chase down the dependency for this hole. Pick the circle. You need to go to an isometric because it'll show you both circles and it'll show you where they are. All the way, yeah, there you go. Now I'll hover over that, that again. Zoom in on that circle so that we can see it. Pick that. When the cyan comes up, you need a mouse over that. Do you see where your reference is coming from? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. No, uh, highlight. highlight it. Now, there's two circles, right? Okay. Turn size on the sketch size. And turn your piston off because they're the same freaking color. Hide the piston. In fact, hide the crank run. We don't need either of those. Cursor over that and zoom in and kind of rotate it so we can see. Highlight that. That hole is being defined by uh, size. Highlight the sketch size in your feature manager tree. Oh, no, it's not. Hide, uh, highlight sketch seven. Okay, so that's not it. So sketch seven isn't the dependency, size isn't the dependency. Let's go up to, um, let's keep things clean. 
Can you hide size, the sketch size? Go open up the folder called crank. And sketch eight, can you highlight that? Uh, I'll sketch six. Just pick on it. Okay, scroll down. <laughs> that isn't it. Pick on a sketch five. Where where are we? How come we can't find that uh the sketch that this is being referred to? Can you scroll down? Oh, you're in. Okay, I think you're in bracket. No, you're not. You're in crank. Oh. Collapse crank, expand crank arm. There it is. In sketch A, there is a circle. That circle is being driven from the sketch size. Okay, I want you to click in white space. I want you to click on the black circle. And I want you to click on top of the constraint, the cyan constraint. That, I want you to turn on size underneath the crank arm. Up. You see that circle? You see the circle defined in crank arm? I need for you to hover over the cyan. They are the same. You said you wanted to use the circle in size. Okay, go ahead, click in white space. I wanna just beat this to death to the point where you hate it. Okay. Right there, just kidding. <laughs> I think we are, but it gets, it gets better or it gets worse, whatever way you want to put it. Okay, so sketch eight. The size of the circle is being referenced. It has a reference to size in crank arm. Double click on size in crank arm. Highlight the bottom black inner circle and the white equal sign, click on that. My bad, I did not mean to. Zoom out so we can see both circles, top and bottom. Highlight that equal size. No, don't go out there and pick anything. It's the bottom mm -hmm. one that's defining, pick on it. What is that circle based on? The circle. Okay, let's go to the top circle. Pick on it. And nope, not that one, because that one says I'm okay to the one on the bottom. Zoom in on that guy. That circle is being defined as the edge of the crank pin. Turn the uh, crank on so we can see the crank. Turn the part crank on. And let's exit out of this sketch. Remembering that top circle, say okay to size. You see that inner edge? Uh, size is still highlighted. Can you please turn that off? So hide size, okay. Highlight the inner edge of that crank pin. I want you to see that. Okay, that. That defines the inner hole in the connecting arm. That also goes down and creates the size of the bottom one. Then that bottom one is actually transferred over to the piston. If we change 
the pin in the crankshaft, it'll go through and it's going to change everything. You want to try it? Double click on size in the uh, crank arm. No, okay. That's not going to do it. So say, okay, let's go up to crank and let's scroll down. And okay, so we mirrored, we need to find out. Okay, so which sketch creates that? I need for you to go into the geometry. I need for you to pick that pin. No, pick not that, pick the pin. Go to the left a little bit, pick that. That's the extrude. More than likely it's sketch five that produced that. Put your mouse on sketch five. Double click sketch five. Change two to three. Say okay to that change. Turn the crank arm on. Scroll down, that bottom hole should be big. Turn the piston on. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. The dependency chain. Go back to sketch five, double click it, change it back to two. Say okay to that and it ripples all the way down. Let's go ahead and create a crank pin. And we'll put that in with the piston because I'm tired of these folders with very little stuff in them. So let's go ahead and create a piston folder. And we're gonna put a crank pin. So where do we want to define the crank pin? Um, hide everything but the piston. And let's go ahead and uh, zoom in and see if we can figure out. Let's just define, keep our references similar. Let's go in and we need to define a sketch on that inside face. There you go. Okay, now you have two cross sections going, delete the second cross section, say okay. Okay, now pick that inside face. Let's call this crank pin a uh, piston pin, excuse me. Say okay. All right, now you, that'll exit you out of the sketch. Oops. Okay, now what we wanna do, no, you're, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah. Go in and uh, you can use one of the edges of those holes. So you need to go to your ISO or rotate. You don't need to go to your ISO, you just need to rotate your view, pick the inside edge, use it. And you're gonna extrude a new part. Did you hit use? Yeah, that's fine. Hold on, uh, pick piston pin for your sketch. And there, okay. So let's get out of this, uh, escape. Edit piston pin, double click it. Yeah, that's fine. There, okay, I need for you to select the edge and hit the U key on your keyboard. Okay, that time it created a circle. Okay, now you can say extrude some geometry and let's just go
yeah, blind three millimeters or whatever. And then uh, second direction. Uh, two millimeters, I guess. I don't know. Let's take a look at it from the right view. That's the back view. We need to look at the right view. And let's just say okay to that. Turn your uh, cross section off. Okay, just say okay. Okay, now pick, uh, oh, it combined them. So go to extrude 13 and say, I want a new part. Say, okay. Now pick on part seven on your feature manager tree. Okay, it's not exactly centered. So let's uh, double click extrude 13. And in the first direction, highlight the depth. No, highlight three and hit the up arrow key. Okay, that's good enough. Say okay. All right, so rename um, part 17 to piston pin or part seven to piston pin. Okay, let's turn all on and I'm done with this layout sketch. Show all parts. Yep, there you go. All right. So now let's go off and let's assemble this beast. Um, so, I have 10 minutes, just so you know. Yeah. Let's go ahead and assemble the crank arm. So insert and go down to crank arm. Say okay. Uh, let's go move it so we can see the upper circle. So move the crank arm. No, no. Okay, just all right. What do you? I mean, I need for you to pick, circle, not pick, descriptive. Pick the crank arm on the screen and move it. Just drag it. Okay, good. So now what we need to do is we need to create a revolve mate. So I need for you to click the revolve. And I need for you to pick on the crank arm, the center face. So zoom in, zoom in and grab the center. That's it, pick it. I need for you to go and pick the corresponding pin on the crank. You need to rotate so you can see it. Pick that cylinder and get the, that pick and say, okay. Okay, so, and exit out of that and rotate your wheel. Okay, let's go put a piston on the end of this. We don't need the piston pin right now. Actually, what you can do is you can say, pist bring in piston and piston pin, same time. Okay, say okay, group. So you need to go up to the group icon, group, uh, up, over, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the left, that one, group. And I need for you to pick piston and piston pin. You can pick it off the feature tree, yeah. Piston and pin say okay. And now what I need for you to do is to pick this, zoom in on the piston, zoom in on that stuff. Okay. It would be nice. Go ahead and say revolve. Revolve? Yeah. Mate. So pick a mate revolve, the mate revolve up, up. Pick the center hole. There you go. Now go down and pick the pin and let's hope that we got the center, yeah. Only problem is that thing better be centered. Say okay. And zoom. Now rotate your wheel. Uh, 
<laughs> All right. We will, let's stop here. And when we design the base, we'll design the cylinder and we'll change out the constraints so that the, uh, actually we don't wanna change the constraint. What we'll do is we'll just make that piston go up and down inside of the cylinder, okay? Okay. Hit the uh, F key on your keyboard. Ta-da! I'll see you later. Delete. Hey, <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay, bye. Bye.